Hello and welcome to the first in a new series. This is my own documentation of my first adventure into building a VTOL aircraft, vertical take off and landing. Now, for those of you that haven't already seen it, there's this series here that I did with Ben up at 3DXR. Ben is a Jedi master when it comes to building VTOLs. He was incredibly generous and gave over two business days to take me through the entire process. And that version of five videos is available to everybody, linked down below. Now, I learned a lot from Ben watching him do it. However, watching someone else do it compared to you doing it yourself is a very different learning experience. And this is my first attempt at building a VTOL for myself. I love the idea of having a fixed wing that can take off and land vertically. More for the landing part, where any normal wing of any decent size is going to need a couple of hundred yards of open flat ground, whereas having the ability to come in, hover above yourself and land within a kind of a six foot square means you can fly it from pretty much everywhere. And that's been really interesting to me. I've wanted to build a VTOL for ages. And after Ben sharing his knowledge and know-how, I think I'm ready to kind of bite the bullet myself. My plan for this build is to replicate lots of things that Ben did in that series. The reason for that is because, as I said, this is going to be a learning experience for me. So I wouldn't follow along with this in terms of using the same stuff. I'll come on to a minute uh, onto the bits I've decided to use. I wouldn't say that this is one of those that you just go and buy that parts list and follow along. That isn't what this series is about. I'm going to document everything as I do this. The good, the bad, and the downright ugly as well. I'm going to learn an awful lot through this process and some of it will be through mistakes but it's better that I learn that rather than you do it on your own with some expensive equipment. I'm hoping by the end of this particular series I will have mastered quad plane and the little intricacies of setting everything up so I can shrink it down even more into the next build. The other reason for using components that are things that kind of Ben knows and understands as much as possible is that it also means that I have the ability to go to Ben if I get stuck so I can be his VTOL Padawan to his VTOL Jedi Master and hopefully he can point me in the right direction in those situations where I do make a horrible mess of it. So let me go through the things that I am going to use. You've probably already seen from the thumbnail and got an idea what some of it is, but let me explain in a little bit more detail because this stuff that I'm using, as I've just explained, isn't the kind of stuff that I would say, this is my perfect first build. This is using stuff that I've already got here that will cobble together in a pretty successful way. It says fingers crossed, but means then I can learn and play with everything before getting into the nitty gritty of building something very, very custom. So what parts have I got here? What am I going to repurpose in order to build this first VTOL? Well, let's start with the flight controller. My initial instinct was to go for something like one of the Matek wing flight controllers that are supported by Ardu Pilot. Now, whenever you're doing anything with VTOL, I would always recommend, before you get too far involved in any of this stuff, make yourself a cup of coffee, cup of tea, grab yourself a fruit juice, and sit down and read the ardupilot.org slash plane slash index HTML and go through and read everything. That is the best place for information, and I'm definitely going to be using that along with the videos that I created with Ben to try and navigate these waters and get to the other side and have a successful build. But because of that, I'm not going to be using the Matek flight controller. I'm actually going to be using one of these, a Pixhawk Cube Orange. Now, the Cube Orange is what Ben used, and it's using the latest generation of GPS and also uh, an airspeed sensor too. Having an airspeed sensor in a VTOL is really important. It's going to help the VTOL know exactly what the airspeed is over the wing and be able to calculate exactly when stalls are going to happen and help with the transitions both to and from hover. So it's really important that an airspeed sensor is in there. Interestingly, some of the other models that I've had in don't use airspeed sensors. And that means that in windier conditions, you're potentially going to pay a penalty or potentially going to have to set one of the lower speeds where the transition happens. You're going to have to give yourself quite a margin of error. I know this is a little overkill for this, but I saw how well 
Ben did it, and I do need to replicate that setup for this time round just to figure out how it all works. Then, when the next time, I'll use something like a Matek wing with Ardu Pilot, and I will be able to take all of this know-how and shrink it onto a 50, 60 pound flight controller rather than something expensive like a Cube Orange. In terms of the airplane, I'm going to be using this Atom seal. I need something that's big enough for the cube to fit inside with the daughter board and all the other electronics, things like the GPS, the airspeed sensor, things like a power distribution board to get the power to everywhere else it needs to be. Now the cool thing about the Atom seal is that it has these little wing extensions that fit on the inside here. Now I can make these a permanent part of the plane and reinforce them and these will be a perfect place to mount the, the motors and props under the wing. Far enough away from everything else so they're going to work and then it's just the wing ends that are going to go onto here rather than the entire wing and that means that hopefully the build should be a little bit easier. In terms of the motor and props, I'm going to be using these motors here. I've pulled these motors and ESC from my Holybro X500 V2 frame. I'm still waiting for RD Pilot version 4.2 to build that multi-rotor out with the flight controller. But this is a great chance for me to use these 2216 880kV motors that are spinning a 10 inch prop similar to lots of other motor prop setups used in DGI kit as well. Each of these motors and props has got to be roughly 500-550 grams of thrust so together the four motors are going to be able to lift about 2.22 kilograms which means my target weight for the model is going to be around 1 to 1.2 kilograms in total with everything inside. So how am I going to attach the motors and props to the underside of the wing? Well I think this is going to be a video on its own for this because I'm almost there I think I've more or less figured it out and thanks to modern 3D printing it's not as complicated as I thought it was going to be. The thing with this is I'm planning to use 15 millimeter round tube. This is carbon tube I've got from 3DXR that's going to be mounted under the wing front to back. Now 3D printed and designed some mounts that are going to allow me to attach it underneath and there'll be bolts that will go through the mounts through the wing into some kind of top surface that will keep everything in place. I can then attach the motors and props onto the end of this. Unfortunately, I couldn't get hold of 16 millimeter tube, which is what it really needs. I can make 15 millimeters work, but unfortunately that means the ESCs don't fit inside the tube. And actually, I'm not worried about that at all. Again, this build is a little bit of a Frankenstein build. It is an exploration. It is a test setup for me to figure out how all this VTOL stuff works. So if it's not as pretty as the builds I'm going to do after it, I'm not too worried about that. I do need to work to keep the central gravity in the middle of the wing. I do need to work to keep the weight down. I do need to have everything nice and rigid, and that's something I'm going to have to continue to test. Gluing the wing, potentially covering it in something, would also help with the rigidity as well. We'll see how that all works. And then I also might need to insert a couple of shims in the front mount for this because ideally what you want is the flying attitude of the plane and the horizontal position of the boom for the VTOL motors to be the same. Now most planes are going to be three, four, up to eight, nine degrees nose up in terms of regular cruise flight. So we might find that we need to put a shim at the front, but having all the 3D printable stuff means that that's pretty easy to do. I'll share all of the 3D files that I'm creating for this as I go through the series. Other things I'm going to need, I'm going to need a power distribution board. I can use the one that's hidden away in the middle of the X500 frame, or I could make my own out of standard power cables like I used to do in the old days. I'll see what fits best when I come to that particular part. I'm going to need a lot of time and patience. Again, this is the first time I've ever done this. The little bit of apprehension about some of the steps. Uh, ben went through everything at a very, very quick pace. And redoing it yourself, it's easy. Potentially miss out something 
or to do something in a slightly different way to how Ben's done it that's going to end in a different outcome. Last thing I also need to have an idea of is the stall speed, the cruise and the maximum speed in meters per second for that Atom RC seal. Not the Atom RC seal as it is before I bolted all of this extra weight and extra drag onto the frame, but how it flies afterwards. I'm probably going to have to take a guess at this because the numbers that I'm going to come up with in meters per second are the ones that are going to tell Arduplane with that airspeed sensor when it's safe to or the transition from hover to forward flight is complete and vice versa. So I'm going to need to know the stall, normal and max speeds and I might have to figure that out by flying it. My guess is at the moment it's going to be something like 50 mile an hour stall, about 6.7 meters per second, about 25 miles per hour for cruise, that's about 11.1 .1 meters a second and about 40 miles per hour top speed, about 17.9 meters a second. If you fly a Atom RC seal and you know what those three numbers are really rather than me guessing do let me know that'll be a massive help. So the first video after this will probably be me um, unwrapping the cube and putting it all together making sure that the GPS is working I can see the airspeed sensor configuring all the outputs and doing the same thing that Ben did. I think the one after that will probably be me trying to figure out how to bolt the motors into the little stub wings that are the wing extensions as part of the Atom RC model, making sure that that is nice and sturdy. And if it isn't sturdy enough, maybe reinforcing it with a bit of laminate or something, or maybe even some carbon fiber sheeting going through the entire thing. Then it will be wiring and testing, and then it will be the final preparation before going out to the field and maidening it. And hopefully we'll end up with a video where it's some of the extra tips and tricks about what I found with the entire build. So hopefully that's interesting for those of you that have uh, been interested in VTOL and kind of want to see it warts and all. I know loads of people at the moment are putting video up on places like YouTube showing their VTOL flying around. I please I request to all of you that are making content like that please make more videos and share it with us all about how you're getting that all working it's going to help everybody get to the end of the process and everything to work so i'm going to share my entire build process warts and all with you and hopefully we'll all get to the other end and i'll have this all working if it doesn't it isn't a disaster i'm going to have learned an awful lot but it would be nice to get to the end of 10 12 hours work and have something that flies. We'll see. So I'll see you in the next video where we'll unwrap the Pixel Cube and start setting things up. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media and if you're trying to learn about a subject then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.